if Trump doesn't win this election, you can say goodbye to democracy. We've had four years of the demonization of a man that I think I have never ever seen in the past, in any election, anywhere. Daily News ran this front page earlier this week, Trump is Hitler. But now I realize he's a total fascist, a fascist to the core. If you wanna talk about what Kamala Harris is running on, that's a completely different conversation. But this man is an absolute danger. The people closest Can to him are saying This man is, there have been two assassination attempts against this man because of this irresponsible rhetoric about someone being a danger. Wait, Can we that? stop because it? he is okay. a danger. <laughs> Can we stop it? Why am I saying that you can say goodbye to democracy if Trump doesn't win? It's very simple. Whatever happens in America happens six to eight years later in the rest of the world. Whatever happens in this election, and I think it is the most important election that we've had at least in a hundred years, this is gonna be the difference between freedom and tyranny. And I don't know if you already can tell, but I am rooting for Trump. Many men wish death upon me. Trump derangement syndrome is very, very real. And a lot of people have it. Let me tell you what's gonna happen if the Democrats win. Trump will for sure go to prison without valid reasons to go to. They will try to find anything, anywhere that anyone says to try to get him into prison. You have to think about this. If the Democrats win, and I think I am not overstating this, I think democracy in the Western world will come to an end and we will have tyranny by benevolence. What do I mean by that? It will all be nice policies that sound really nice, that seems like they're trying to help everyone out of the goodness of their hearts. But what we're gonna have is an authoritarian government that's gonna spread from America to the rest of the Western world. Whereas by any type of dissent, any type of going against the official narrative, that will be just crushed out. It seems funny enough that all the people that say that if Trump wins, that will be the end of democracy, are the ones that are being anti-democratic, are the ones that are, are using the judiciary to try to get Trump behind bars. They're trying to silence the opposition. I think it's one of those things that I'm doing what I'm accusing you of doing. We've had endless years of the demonization of Trump, comparing him to Hitler, comparing him with one of the worst human beings that we've had in the last 100 years, that killed millions upon millions of people, that murdered six million Jews. The left just doesn't have, like they're not, they're not ashamed of comparing him to Hitler. They're not ashamed of of demonizing him again, again, and again. And then when inevitably someone tries to murder him, if all you keep hearing is he's a threat to democracy, he's gonna be a dictator, he's the same as Hitler. If you keep hearing that over and over and over and over again, is it really shocking to you that someone that is not very well up there is gonna grab a gun and try to kill him? It, it, it doesn't seem strange to me that someone tried to do that. And that was just one person. Another person tried a few, few weeks later. And if you keep hearing over and over and over again, he's a threat to democracy, he's going to be like Hitler, uh, what is the reasonable thing to do? Is just stop the person that's a threat to democracy. So democracy can continue. What I think is gonna happen if the Democrats win is the complete annihilation of the Western world from the inside. You have to remember, when Rome fell, it was the people inside of Rome that permitted Rome to fall. It's like that saying that the barbarians don't get through the gates if someone doesn't open the gates for them. Immigration is gonna run 
absolutely out of control in America if the Democrats win. They're gonna keep demonizing young white men and white men overall. They're gonna put that into overdrive. Now, Kamala Harris knows that right now, that's not the right move to do. Kamala Harris right now knows that white young men could be the deciding factor between winning the election and losing the election. And she knows for a fact that white men, young white men are not backing her up. That's why now she is trying everything that she can to try to win their vote. But it's too little too late. When you've, kept, when you've kept demonizing young white men for almost 10 years now, you keep telling them they're toxic, they're bad, they're misogynist, they're everything wrong that's happening right now in the Western world. They're, they're the evil that's corroding everything. And now all of a sudden you want their vote? Well, I'm sorry, that's not how things work. And I think this video does not help Kamala Harris in the least. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man, man. And I'm man enough. I'm man enough to enjoy a barrel-proof bourbon. Meat. Man enough to cook my steak rare. But none of it's true. None of it's true. It's BS. They made it up. They lie. Man enough to deadlift 500 and braid the out of my daughter's hair. You think I'm afraid to rebuild a carburetor? I eat carburetors for breakfast. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Modern cars don't have carburetors because they have been replaced by fuel injection systems. I eat carburetors for breakfast. Eating the food that belongs to the next four years ahead of time. I ain't afraid of bears. That's what bear hugs are for. I'll tell you another thing I sure as shit am not afraid of. Women. I'm not afraid of women. I'm not afraid of women. So, you guys work with Leonard and Sheldon at the university? I, I'm sorry, do you speak English? Oh, he speaks English, he just can't speak to women. They want to control their bodies? I say go for it. They want to use IVF to start a family? I'm not afraid of families. They want to be childless cat ladies? Have all the cats you want. But can anyone who loves animals that much really be crazy? Woman wants to be president? Well, I hope she has the guts to look me right in the eye and accept my full throated indoors. Wow, that is really hard. You really think you can go all day long? Full throated indoors. Well, you always left me satisfied and smiling, so. She has the guts to look me right in the eye and accept my full throated endorsement. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael, please. Serious. Because I'm man enough to support women. Man enough to know what kind of donuts I like. Man enough to admit I'm lost, even when I refuse to ask for directions. Man enough to not ban young women from reading Little Women. Or one of those pants books that the sisters like. I'm man enough to raw dog a flight. It sucked. Not worth it. I'm man enough to be emotional in front of my wife. In front of my kids. In front of my horse. I'm man enough to tell you that I cry at Love Actually. Goodwill Hunting. West Side Story. That and Predator. And I'm sick of so-called men domineering, belittling, and controlling women just so they can feel more powerful. That's not how my mama raised me. I love women. I love women who support their families. Women who decide not to have families. Women who take charge. And I'm man enough to help them win. Now, I'm going to tell you what is absent from that video. You know what's absent from that video? Testosterone. There's no testosterone anywhere whatsoever. And there've, there's been people actually who have tried to find out who these actors are. We all know they're actors. Any man will not say those things about Kamala Harris. Any sane man, any sane person will not say those things about Kamala Harris. Now they're all actors. And by the way, most of them are gay actors. And you can tell anyway by the video, which like, I'm not gonna get into that. It's just, I find it really funny that they put gay actors trying to get the vote of young heterosexual men. It just seems so outrageous to me. Like anybody can see through the smoke screen that this video is. Anybody can see that Kamala Harris, now it's afraid that young men won't vote for her. She completely lost that demographic. It's rumored that she wants to go on Joe Rogan. Please, Kamala, go on Joe Rogan. I beg you. We want two hours 
of your undivided attention to someone without a teleprompter. By the way, I'm not reading anything right now from a teleprompter. And I am nowhere near as versed as Kamala Harris should be. You know, I'm just a stupid guy in his living room with a camera. And I can say out of the cuff many, many things that I think Kamala Harris would have trouble keeping up with. I find it hilarious all those times when her teleprompter mysteriously breaks, which I think someone is just playing a trick on her. So 32 days, 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right, 32 days. It could be that it breaks, whatever. And she just goes round and round in circles. She cannot keep a thought or a line of thought on a conversation and just circle back to where she started with a line of thought. Usually when people try to do a speech and they do it off the cuff, it's really, really difficult. And I can attest to that as in, I've been doing YouTube for a few years now with no success, but I'm trying my best. And it's really, really hard to not have a teleprompter, get a line of thought across and then go on a tangent, then bring it back to that line of thought that you were starting with, then go on a tangent again and wa wave it all together, which was so funny. I saw Trump on, um, on a podcast the other day and he called it the weave. I'm telling you, it is really, really extremely hard to do. You have to be very quick of thought. You, you have to have all your wits with you to do that. And Trump has it. We can tell that Trump has it. Oh, he rambled. I don't ramble. If I saw the story, yeah. what you do is you weave things and you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have certain things. You need, a, you need an extraordinary memory because you have to come back to where you started. Yes. You always, a weave is only good they if you come back. They were getting credit for that. That's <laughs> yeah, true. That you could go no. all the way over here and then I get back. I can go so far here or there. <laughs> <laughs> and I can come back to exactly where I started. Now, someday when you don't come back to where you started. You're Biden. Then and you not. say. <laughs> do I agree with everything that Trump says? No. Do I agree with everything that Trump does? Kind of. Because we've already had four years of Trump and we've already had four years of Kamala. Now, when was the American people better off? With, with Trump or with Kamala Harris? Now, all this stooges that are just defending Kamala till the end, which, look, I, I just have to think that they're getting paid from the Democratic Party because there's no way people will defend her. I don't know, if you have TDS, maybe you can defend her till the end, I don't know, but it just seems very weird to me that people on the Democrat side are not willing to accept that things were a million times better when Trump was in power than they are now. Now people will say, well, Kamala wasn't in power, it was Biden, really? Like, are you out of your fucking mind? Do you think Biden was in power these four years? Do you think he was the guy driving? Do you think he was the guy directing the show? If someone should have been directing the show these four years, well, it should have been the vice president. It should have been Kamala Harris. Now, we all know why she was there as a vice president in the first place, and we all know why she's been inserted with a mallet as the nominee. There was no democratic nomination of her in the, fir in the first place. She's just been put there. We don't know why. Not even the Democrats chose her to lead the party. And she's still there. Now, we all know why she's there. She's a DEI recruitment. She was a DEI recruitment as a vice president, and she is a DEI recruitment as the nominee for the Democrat party. What has she done in all her amazing career as a politician that everybody keeps bringing up that she's been in politics for how many years? Well, nothing. She's done absolutely nothing. I'm not saying that Trump was perfect as a president. She, he inherited a country that is very hard to move. It's like a machine, a cog, that if you try to change how things are run, you are gonna get a lot of pushback and they're not gonna let you do what Trump wants to do, it's obvious. He's an outsider, he wants to change things, he's not part of the establishment, he doesn't wanna keep feeding the American establishment and that, you're gonna pay a price for that. And I think it's obvious the last few months, the price that he's willing to pay. Many men wish death upon me. Why do I say 
kiss democracy goodbye. Look at the price President Trump is willing to pay to lead the American nation to better shores. And look at the price Kamala Harris is paying. None, zero, zero, none at all, okay? Now, Trump is putting his life on the line for the American people. Is Kamala willing to do the same? I doubt it very much. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying somebody don't, nobody has to try to do a stupid thing to Kamala Harris. That is not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying, if you're an American person, just please weigh the differences between Trump and Kamala and think about how your country will be in the next years if Kamala wins and if Trump wins. Now, I'm gonna tell you what will happen if Kamala wins. She's gonna let in another 10 million immigrants into the country that will vote Democrat, while Trump will deport 10 to 15 million that are right now illegally in the country. If Kamala wins and lets in 10 more million, 15 more million, 20 more million immigrants into the United States of America, what will happen is she is going to change the demographics of many of the swing states in the country, resulting in just basically a uni party in the United States where the Democrats will just win over and over and over and over again. Now, you might say, how can letting in 10, 15, 20 million illegal immigrants from countries that are antithetical to the values, principles and ideas of the United States of America? Now, I will tell you why. They don't agree with the Democrat Party because a lot of these immigrants come from countries where the values that the Democrats promulgate, trans ideology, gay, pushing gay rights till the end of the world, pushing women's uh, feminism, revolution, freedom till the end of the world. Now, a lot of these immigrants come from countries where, where their beliefs are the complete opposite of everything the Democrat Party stands for. But here's the kicker. Even though they disagree completely with the beliefs that the Democratic Party has. They're willing to vote for them because they know that if the Democrats are in power, they will get all the benefits, all the help that's needed for them to continue to be in the United States of America and to bring all their families from their countries to the United States of America. They don't want the Republicans to be in power because they know that they might get deported, even though that we could say, even though some of their beliefs from their countries clash with the Republicans, they are more, they are similar to the Republicans than to the Democrats, but they are willing to forego their beliefs for their right to be in the United States of America illegally. If that happens to end up happening, the Democrats win 15 to 20 million immigrants get in in the next four years, that will be the end of America as it is right now. Like I said in the beginning, the barbarians don't get in through the gates unless somebody opens the door for them. Now, we are at a point in our society where the barbarians, they are at the gates and somebody wants to open the door for them. If America sneezes, five years later, the whole world catches a cold. I really fear that if Kamala Harris wins in the next five to 10 years, the world will go down very, very rapidly. The Western world will go on a downhill spiral that is gonna be very, very hard to get out of. I really like what if Alt Hist theory that we're gonna have a civil or revolution war in the, in the upcoming years. Now, I know for a fact that some people are not going to go along with this. Some people are gonna gather, they're gonna unite, they're gonna try to have a shared vision about how the future should look. They're gonna try to defend their nation, be patriotic, and I'm just really afraid. Because people don't think about this. People, people don't think about this. You speak to some people, and they just mindlessly say, yes, we want a revolution, we want a war. Well, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You don't know what that really means. If you knew what it meant, you would be scared of it happening. Me being scared 
of a civil or revolution, of a civil war or a revolution happening in the next five to 10 years. Doesn't mean that I will back away from it or that I will be scared into a corner. Yeah, tough times lay ahead and I really hope the American people can wake up and do the right thing for their country and for the world. America is the ruler of the world, the leader of the free countries, and I'm just afraid of what will happen if America goes down. Inevitably, the rest of the free countries will go down with it. American people, wake up, use your common sense to vote, and let's hope we can all get through this unscathed. Thank you very much for watching, and like always, see you in the next one.